50 seconds of logos. Also Comcast. Extremely CGI Birdosaur. Boys, let's do this! Well, it's not a Jurassic Park movie if there's not a kid obsessed with dinosaurs. Just once I want to see how a kid obsessed with Star Trek fares on an island full of dino predators. Also, Viewmaster foreshadowing. Judy Greer doesn't have a bigger role in this scene. Holy shit, it's the kid Tony Stark gave all those gifts to. No wonder he's a daydreamer. But hey, let's be honest. At least his home life turned around, am I right? I mean, he's got his own room now instead of having to sneak off to the garage. Yourself. Merry little Christmas. Looks like Beat's product placement has even infiltrated the Tony Bennett music videos. Apparently the public is warm to the idea of a huge dinosaur amusement park, but it's still one you have to take a flight to Costa Rica and a ferry to another island to see. With names like Zack and Gray, I know for sure I'm not gonna like these kids. Jurassic Tennis. Damn, the music for this scene is so obvious they stole our outtake. Welcome to Jurassic World. Roll credits. Let's be honest. No one's impressed by a dinosaur anymore. Tell that to the viewers that made this 2015's biggest hit. Also, Jurassic World steals the same reason Monsters, Inc. is in business to justify the plot. Well, how did you get two different kinds of dinosaurs to, you know... Oh, Indominus wasn't bred. She was designed. Blah, blah, blah. No one asked you, B.D. Wong. I'm sure Ron Howard's daughter could have told him that, but hey, glad you could make it to the Jurassic comeback. You didn't miss much between. Is there somebody who comes back and covers this stuff in dirt every 10 minutes or so? Or is this some sort of exclusive archaeological dig that these kids won in a contest? That first park was legit. Movie acknowledges the first film's events as canon, but this new park was still somehow built. You close the deal. Looks like it. Verizon Wireless presents the Indominus Rex. Ugh. Movie chock full of product placements makes fun of brand deals so that Hollywood will seem more like people. You look tense, Claire. You're not even looking at her, dude. And that? It tried to break the glass. But only the one time and never again since, because while it's a smart dinosaur, it's actually quite stupid, you see? We've been taught that raptors are so insanely smart they can figure out puzzles and attack in patterns of shit. but apparently with enough gung-ho attitude, you can train them to be your bitches. I just saw a bond, a real bond. This just in, Chris Pratt is the new Bond. We know that the military needs to reduce casualties. Introducing probably the worst part of this movie, the already supervillain company hoping to recruit these animals for war purposes. But what do they need these dinosaurs for when they have the T-virus? Or am I confusing my movies again? Also, if a military is using raptors to fight wars, don't other militaries just decide to bomb the living shit out of such a fighting force? You don't send dudes on the ground to fight raptors, right? Drones can't search tunnels and caves, and they're hackable. The minute a real war breaks out, all that fancy tech is gonna go dark. So better bank on Velociraptors. Makes perfect sense. Let's see, things are getting boring and we need an action scene. Let's have this guy be inept at his job. Also, is a loose pig really that urgent a problem? Aren't the pigs only here to serve as food for the dinosaurs anyway? Okay. Good. Good. I'm pretty sure there's a 95% chance he would be eaten here. But with the evil military guy here, these raptors are going to do everything in their power to move that plot forward. And they try and eat him as soon as he moves for the safety of the gate. But later, they'll be running alongside his motorcycle, not chomping on his delicious face. Don't ever turn your back to the cage. Which is what I'm gonna do right now. I know this is Costa Rica, where laws may be more lax, but this is just an insurance f***ing nightmare, this park. Again, how did it ever get built? Even out of the U.S., they're gonna be sued 2,500 times a year at a minimum. Hey, cover up your door pouch. Interestingly, this is also how kangaroos mock their nerdy siblings. This place sells dino balloons with almost no helium in them, so they appear to be walking on the ground, which means they lose what little helium they have very quickly and are just an overpriced brief waste of time. At least if you buy the pterodactyl balloon, it comes with full helium out of the box. Am I supposed to laugh or wince at this? Jurassic World, the theme park, feels half parody of the over-commercialization of Disney and other theme parks, and half actually what would happen in this movie's reality. The next T-Rex feeding will begin in 10 minutes. Movie expects me to believe that only this one child is running for the T-Rex exhibit after that announcement. Do you even kid, screenwriter? Wow, cell phone reception is excellent on a remote Costa Rican island. I went to Montana last summer and found out T-Mobile doesn't have any service in that state. Like, at all. But the Costa Rican Ocean f***ing blanketed in cell coverage. This was supposed to be a family weekend, Claire. Skip! There's apparently no such thing as calling a guy on the phone when it comes to asking for his help. Nope, we need a full scene of Chris Pratt exerting his male dominance over the alpha female. Also, I wonder how much Jurassic World paid Mercedes to slide this movie into their car commercial. <sighs> Made. <laughs> what? Owen's nickname must be Danielson. Did this movie just have its jock hero catch a fly in midair? Jesus. I don't control the raptors, it's a relationship. It's bullshit, whatever label you want to put on it, dude. That's why you and I never had a second date. Why is it every time there's a woman who needs to find some man for a job in movies they've dated before? You might want to change your shirt. They're very sensitive to smell. Way to get back at him for all that sexist dialogue, toots. I mean, this is the 30s, right? I can get away with calling her that. Only the first row or two got slickers, even though roughly 32 rows were drenched by the Mosasaur spray. We've been pre-booking tickets for months. Okay, what? 
You waited until now to seek an expert's opinion on the paddock? And also, this is the first anyone's hearing about it on the island, even though it's been public knowledge on the mainland for three months? The base genome is a T-Rex, the rest is classified. You might as well say raptor then, or lie. Also, how can you ask a dude to evaluate the perspective worthiness of a dino paddock without telling him what he's dealing with? I know we're supposed to understand that InGen hires these lax, lazy security guards because they don't give a f but come on, this is just piling on. With siblings, they learn social skills, and I imprint on them when they're born. And now I'm picturing that creepy Twilight baby. Thank you. Also, we just heard that the Indominus was born with a sibling. She ate it. So all this smart talk by Owen to make him look like the world's foremost authority on dino psychology and shame the company for their misdeeds comes off just a little hollow when we know that. Plus, she never tells Owen this for some reason. Claire gets in the car and calls HQ about tracking the Indominus, instead of doing that before leaving the paddock. Remember, this thing could be anywhere, including the parking lot. Also, we can show how deaf this new dinosaur is, and so she can't relay the information in time to Owen, who stupidly goes inside the cage. When you think about it, this is just the Indominus' protest against Jurassic Park 3. Excellent. Radio craps out right when they need it to work, and despite the excellent cell phone coverage demonstrated earlier. Like all doors in these movies, they close with the speed of a VIC-20 computer. Meanwhile, you have a SeaWorld attraction at your park where you can lower a whole stadium of people in way less time. Let me get this straight. The guy who got out of the paddock first decided, I'll hide in front of my truck, instead of, you know, getting in the truck and driving away? That's what you get for eating sandwiches on the job. It's amazing InGen thought this dinosaur would be their business savior, when it's basically just T-Rex 2, the Rexening. My wife, she came at me with a steak knife, took a chunk out of her arm. Do you get the sense Vincent D'Onofrio invented this backstory about raising a wolf pup strictly for his character? Amazing, the guy who wants to use raptors for war has this convenient history to share. Yep, this also looks like a serious death risk for the park visitors. What control systems are in place to keep this herd from knocking over the truck? If mom and dad get divorced, will one of us be with mom and the other with dad? Who gives a sh In fact, who gives a shit about these kids? At least Lex and Tim were part of the action from the get-go. These kids were dropped off by a Z-rated babysitter and they offer nothing, absolutely nothing, to this movie. I googled the divorce lawyers. Which happens, dads leave, no need to be a pussy about it. Look, you're gonna get two everything, right? You're gonna get two birthdays, two Thanksgivings, two... I don't want two of everything. Except parents, right? How do you not shut down all attractions and issue an evacuation order with a genetically enhanced hybrid T-Rex on the loose? I need to see a badge. How the f*** did the elevator even allow him on this floor? You know you can make elevators do amazing things these days, right? Including keeping out unauthorized personnel? She marked up that wall as a distraction. She wanted us to think she escaped. Hold on. And she knew that you had cameras that detected thermal signatures and somehow knew she needed to reduce her body temperature so she couldn't be detected. I know when I was born, I already had the theory of calculus down pat, so that's legit. You're going after her with non-lethals. We have $26 million invested in that asset. Movie steals the Paul Reiser from Aliens. That's her tracking implant. She clawed it out. How would it know to do that? She remembered where they put it in. And she knew exactly what it was, apparently. They're putting something in my body? Must be a way to track me. Thank you, That's kind of cool, actually. But this is the last time this really smart dinosaur does anything cool the rest of the movie. All it becomes after this is a remorseless eating machine. Evacuate the island. We'd never reopen. Oh, okay then. Keep it open. Dinosaur nerd kid cliche bumps up against older brother is only interested in girls cliche, and I'm honestly actively rooting for both these dickheads to die, so there. If their genetic code was pure, many of them would look quite different. But take that, people who nitpick Jurassic Park on the look of the dinosaurs. Shame on you, nitpickers. Shame! Hey there, I'm Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. No, we can stay out a couple more minutes. Dinosaur amusement park allows rides that can be personally controlled by teenagers. Hello? They made these where there's no communication available other than your own cell phones. It's almost like InGen was writing a screenplay when they made these things. You know, I'm just worried that you're not getting the full Jurassic World experience. Amazing, on the day that Claire's nephews came to the park, that's when all the shit went down. And they're assholes too, which makes it even more fun. And there's five dinosaurs. Aren't you supposed to be a genius or something? Yeah, genius. So if you see five dinosaurs, including one that looks like the T-Rex got dipped in X-Men mutagen, why are you being so goddamn vague and calm about it? Also, Indominus Rex's path manages to go exactly where the people we're supposed to care about go. The phone call intended to help save the kids actually puts the kids in further danger. This happened in the last movie. <laughs> movie thinks that I'll experience satisfactory thrills if it literally repeats the first movie's kids in peril scene, but with a change from night to day and two boys instead of a brother and sister. Indominus managed to miss two kids with what is basically a huge jagged piece of glass at this point. Thank God dinosaurs hate water. The baby doll from American Sniper thinks this looks fake as sh It didn't eat him. It's killing for sport. And that, my friends, is how a dinosaur gets more character than all the humans in this movie. Owen, we have a situation here. Has this guy really been tracking Hoskins' movements this whole time? When he's not training raptors, is he this island's official coast guard or something? Zach! Why? <laughs> hey, I am not one of your damn animals. Does this woman know anything about dinosaurs? Stay here. Stay here? 
Stay here? What the f Jurassic World is so concerned it's not paying enough respect to Jurassic Park, it puts in a whole scene paying respect to Jurassic Park. You remember when we fixed up Grandpa's old Malibu, right? Ah, sudden car savviness! Even before the dino breakout, this park is clearly over capacity. That thing is a killing machine! He's talking about Indominus Rex, but he could just as easily be talking about Hoskins' diet. Go we'll take this. You're stronger than me. Just goes to show, guys, if you've been an asshole to your brother all your life, all it takes is an Indominus Rex attack to set yourself straight. Once again, the Indominus finds its way around the main characters, but all we've been hearing about is how it's making a beeline south towards the park. This is not too far from where we lost Sar, when she was attacking those two kids before they ran here. So, I guess despite the fact she's currently moving south, she's doing it in a zigzaggy east-west motion. Dinosaur we know has knowledge of thermal radiation and tracking devices didn't bother taking Owen's gun on the way out. Hey, I remember that scene. Well, I mean, we have to acknowledge that the Indominus isn't that big a target, so even the best of us could miss something like this. Hey, I have an idea about how we can get to the silly plotline with Hoskins and the War Raptors. Let's have the owner of InGen fly his helicopter, make absolutely no impact on the plot, crash, and die! Okay, that's it. I'm safe now. Why would you say this? <laughs> Teardemic. Movie leaves behind the two brothers for a bit so we can experience true horror and seed our future nightmares by traveling along with this chick as she gets repeatedly captured, tortured, and eaten by flying dinosaurs. Also, a lot of you love this scene, and I don't know if I blame you, but for the very fact that Zara never once was a character in this movie, merely playing an occasional cutaway shot, the impact this scene could have had is lost because she's really not much above an extra in this movie. Something sharp crashes towards characters and comes to a complete stop at the last second cliche. This is a good time to do that. And he has this insane plan to use the raptor to hunt the Indominus. You mean the giant genetically enhanced dinosaur we haven't seen or heard from in almost 20 minutes of screen time? I know Hoskins is insane, so maybe sending the fact that he thinks this is going to work is ridiculous in itself. But the guy saw Owen control the raptors one time from an elevated position, and suddenly that equals, now we can use the raptors to fight Indominus. I think even insane people would need more data. This is happening! With or without you. So the release of the raptors into the open is happening. With or without the only guy who can somewhat control them? This statement might be the dumbest thing in this entire movie. Empty threat is empty. Owen has all the power here. You remember that ghost at the old house? You mean the one that made him go into the further? Probably not. Also, a movie hints at a much better movie we will sadly never see. Luckily, the Indominus somehow knowing she had a tracking device lodged in its skin and tearing it out becomes a convenient way for the raptors to ironically track her the old-fashioned way. Also, at what point did they get this patch of skin with the tracker back? Remember when the soldiers found it? This guy was holding it, got thrown into the water and stomped. So I guess they sent people on a mission to go recover that piece of flesh? And the only way they could find it, the tracker, remained miraculously intact? So the big final plan is for the raptors to lead the way to Indominus, followed by Owen on a motorcycle, French dude on a four-wheeler, and the kids and girl they're trying to protect in the van that follows? These raptors somehow race toward this Indominus as though they thought the four of them could defeat it. But now that they're facing it, they're like, oh, sh dude, what were we thinking? They're communicating. Yeah, but doesn't the Indominus have zero social skills? Wasn't that the reason it became a murdering psychopath? So the raptors just instantly fall in line with this thing because it's big and it speaks raptor? Movie turns into Turok evolution. We're headed your way, calling a chopper. I'm not sure why I only thought of this now, but just do it. And gentlemen, we'd like to thank you for your patience. While many of you were being killed. Someone has to stay behind. They do? What have you done to this point that requires your presence? Sure, you get your big moment later when you open the T-Rex paddock, but that's about it. Nature is the gift. <laughs> Well, I'm glad to see him get his comeuppance, especially at the hands of a raptor. But Deep Blue Sea called, and they'd like their character suddenly killed during a big speech back. Also, a random raptor shows up on the scene, apparently knowing the layout of the lab to run straight to this room. Interrupts Hoskins' mid-monologue, knows who the bad guy of this movie is, and goes straight for him. Well, they're blocked on both sides by raptors, and the end looks near. Which means the heretofore unseen T-Rex is going to save the day, because we're paralleling the first movie hard here, people. God damn it. <laughs> A minute ago, you guys said, F*** Owen, I love the Indominus now. Now that Owen takes your harnesses off, you suddenly switch sides for no real apparent reason other than raptor nostalgia. Lowry, are you still there? Why did you specifically radio for Lowry? Did you know that the slacker guy was going to be the one person to stay behind? Is this a Marvel movie? Are we once again going to see something fight at slightly bigger twin? Um, she cannot outrun a T-Rex. Remember the first movie when they're in the Jeep? Must go faster? Jeff Goldblum's torso? I thought y'all were kidding about the heels, but goddamn. What? You mean you're not gonna try and get her on your side? Thankfully, the T-Rex they released is more interested in killing genetically enhanced dinosaurs than it is in killing humans. Where the f*** did this thing come from? I thought all the raptors were dead. Raptor X Machina, I guess. Everywhere these assholes run, the fight follows them. This is an awesome ending, but how did the underwater thing know that the Indominus thing was right here at this moment doing Indominus things? T-Rex Raptor Diplomacy. Why do we just assume that because the Indominus is dead, all the danger is over now? There are loose animals all over the park, but I guess after the T-Rex and the raptor had their heart to heart, all the wild dinosaurs just know when enough's enough. We promise not to get divorced now.
Ever since CinemaSins began, the most requested thing has been TV Sins, and now it's a reality. <gasps> Click the link in the description below to check it out. And now, the audio outtakes. Apollo 13 flight controllers, listen up. Wait, what the hell? It's in the cage. It's the call. It's coming from inside the house. There is another guy. Cool.